Here we go again, interrupted again. At 10 minutes, I was disconnected. And I had to upload the video unfinished. So, so let's go back to what I was talking about. So, uh, so you take that situation that I was talking about, and you realize that adding up all these things means that, that people are just not ready to have any kind of real pe lasting peace if they can't have it, like I said, if they can't have their war physically, then they'll have it in a subliminal way, in an abstract way, that still has the war going on, some kind of war. Whether it's a neighbor calling on another, or a person causing intentional infliction of emotional distress constantly. And I say there's two types of people on the planet. One, people like me, that consciously and subconsciously don't care when they're going to die and have no fear about it. They, they welcome it because this, they realize how crazy this planet is and how contradictory all these humans, men and women are, and that there's, they're not worth saving. And then there's the people who really are scared. They have never accepted subconsciously that they can accept that they're going to die. So they're going to go out of their way to make life as miserable as they can including authority figures, and even to the point of killing people because they cannot accept that they're going to die one day. And they'd rather see someone else die first than them die or accept that they're going to die one day. And, and to believe that they're on the side of right. Who's on the side of right when you take the money, that you pay taxes, that you support this system collectively, and pay the money to the military that takes that money and kills innocent men, women, and children in other countries just to get resources. And I've got color pictures of the boy, little boys, girls, babies, pregnant mothers, their husbands, mothers, fathers, cousins, relatives, all blown apart to pieces because of a, a, a mistake or an, an oops. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry doesn't fix it. And you know, I honestly believe that my videos, they're not, a lot of them have been disconnected and, and screwed with because a lot of these videos, the government's behind it. They have the ability to push a button and interfere in the signal that's coming from Starbucks to this computer and whack me off. Like this morning, they whacked me off and my computer shut off, logged off automatically without me touching it. And that means somebody interfered in that video. Now, actually, and they know, psychologically, their only defense is, is they know that who's going to sit and go back and study all the past videos to see if I made that statement before. And since I've already made it, they realize no one's going to be that crazy to look at all those videos to find out what I was really saying and why I was interrupted. This is evil. What the cops do, what judges do, your system is out of control. It's broken. And now you've got a double-digit inflation or depression coming or already happening. And still, you don't care. So you're going to get all the violence. I'm glad when the violence happens to all of you. You all deserve it. Because you put down people like me. You force us into homelessness. And for me, I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs. What about you? How many of you that are in power drink, smoke, and do drugs secretly? How many movie stars are you and basketball players and baseball players sitting there shooting yourselves up with steroids and hormones and, and drugs? Hey, man, you know, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. This is why I'm blocked. This is why I'm censored. This is why ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, the BBC, none of these news medias will ever put me on national news because... I'll break all of you. You won't be able to argue back. Only idiots will argue back with me because all of you know I'm right. I know what's going on. I know you shouldn't elect Obama or Bush. You've got a dual dictatorship uh, government. 
That's what you have. And the dual dictatorship is run by the Democrat and Republican Party. And they go to the Bilderberg meetings and the Trilateral Commission meetings, and you're all part of this big club, rich club, that takes and abuses all the poor people. And then you wonder why someone loses their top and walks into a theater and shoots a bunch of people. Next, it'll be a church. Next, it'll be something else. And even if you take the guns away, people will just use knives or they'll use bombs or they'll use rocks. They'll use Molotov cocktails. What are you going to do? Close all the gas stations up? When a person comes in and says they want a gas can full of gas so they can you know, run their lawnmower, even if a person fills their tank in a car or truck, there's no guarantee you have that they won't go. They're not a terrorist. They won't go home. They won't take all the gas out of their cars and put it all in Molotov bottles with the little cloths and light them and use them in attacks against the cities and the, and the authority figures. You have no way of knowing. You can't put a spy camera in everybody's house. And let me tell you, you've got a lot of angry people out there. Repressed anger is the most dangerous kind, especially the kind that's hidden. The kind where people grind their teeth and crack their teeth at night, like I did. You're the ones in trouble, Mr. Obama, Mr. Military, Mr. Uncle Sam, Mr. and Mrs. Uncle Sam. It doesn't matter who you are. You're all asking for it. You're building up. The big, huge, it's like a pimple. It's an infection that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And one day, it's just going to pop on its own. It's going to leave an ugly mess everywhere. That's what you're all headed for. Because you're electing the wrong people. You've got the wrong systems. They're not right. If they were, shootings like that wouldn't happen. Remember I said I'm the only one who can stop that stuff. I can stop those shootings. I could have stopped them starting back in 1996. I can also stop plane crashes. M most of them. Not all of them, but I can also stop the ones that, that if I explain to you how I would do it, then I'd be giving away important information. Now I'm at seven minutes hoping that my video doesn't get disconnected again. Usually when I talk about this, I'll do a one minute video real quick and tell people what happened. That this was intentionally done by some government or some hacker or somebody who is working for the government. I believe that most hackers are working for the government. They really are. I went to go look for a legal form online, some legal forms today and, uh, and yesterday, and every time, and a couple of months ago, and every time I go and I'm looking for some stuff like that, everyone, even though it says free, free, blah, 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 Every one of the people on the website is saying, we'll help you get it. All you have to do is answer some questions. And it's all a scam. By the time you get to the end of the questionnaire, they're asking for your credit card number, and they want you to pay for the information that you want or the copy of whatever you want. So, <clears throat> so your, you people are, are just not getting it. Now today, July 30th, I've had about 20 people from this morning till about uh, 7.30 tonight that have looked at my, actually I could say maybe 5 o'clock, I've had about 20 people, I don't know from where, uh, that viewed my videos, the three videos. And it wasn't all, I did three separate uh, videos. Uh, for July 30th. One of them was about a minute or a couple of minutes. The one that tells you that how I was interrupted. My computer she was shut down automatically. And uh, there were 10 for one, 8 for another, and 2 for another. So uh, added together, you've got like a little 20 of people that looked at the videos. Um, added together. But they didn't all look at each video. So um, so they're missing information. So anyway, um, I'm pretty tired today, so I'm pretty pretty much going to finish this one as a 10-minute video as well. Uh, but uh, anyway, to get back to the theater, so I have been making these cryptic predictions, and it's interesting and coincidental that this person does his shooting in Colorado. He says he's the Joker, and he's pretty much trying to emulate 
the uh, the Joker's uh, statements. He wouldn't have left that notebook if he didn't have hints of what he was going to do. Now I know the I saw the stick figures and all that. Everybody knows that, but there must have been words that went along with it, and the words are very important because the chronology of the words will tell you and open the person's mind without without even talking to the person, and uh, or even meeting the person. Because the government does that to me in all my YouTubes. I, you bet you they do it to all my YouTubes. They probably look at all 250 of them, and they've got a collage of a wall saying, well, Caesar said this, but he meant this because he refers to that in this video and this video, and they've just been putting it together. What they don't know is, is that the subconscious and the conscious mind are very vast, and the DNA has a very nasty habit of causing, just like him, I claim humanity and authority figures cause situational ironies, my mind is no different than any of yours, only mine is, collect, can, is, is manifesting and manufacturing the, the, uh, the situational ironies in such a way that I am manipulating you, the government. You're not manipulating me. It's the other way around. Because, see, my mind knows the end product of all this. You don't. And that's where I have the advantage. That's where you people are on up the creek without a paddle. And your hands are tied behind your back. And that's how you're going to stay, Uncle Sam, until you bow down to me, until you pay me tons of billions of dollars for the damage you've done to me. If Ms. Harris, as Attorney General of California, can get $18 billion as a settlement for the 500 families a day that are losing their homes through foreclosure. And I made that comment earlier. They didn't mention anything in the interview about retroactive pay. All the people that have lost their homes from the time the bubble burst in 2007 to now, tough luck. Too bad. If you're in a storage, if you've been forced into a storage, you're paying twice as much per square foot, and you're probably most likely like a pawn shop, the odds are two to one that you will lose that property in that storage to an auction. And that's what makes all you people evil beyond compare. Because, Ms. Harris, you've left a huge hole where there shouldn't be one. Retroactive hole for the help, helping those like me who have been victimized over and over again are still being victimized because we didn't ask for this situation. You people made it, and you're feeding the situation. You're not solving it. So you people think about that, and you think about taking your money out of the banks and practicing civil disobedience or civil disobedience to any kind of convenience that you think you have. Because you do not have a convenience having a bank account. You don't have a convenience driving a car. Because all that's doing is pumping more oil out of the system, and you're just using up gas, using up gas, using up gas. And eventually, the oil companies have you buy the you-know-what. The banks have you buy the you-know-what. The banks, the oil companies, even the theaters and the sports industry, they have you buy the you know what. And you ain't going to get away because you're too lazy to do it. You're too lazy to get behind somebody and bring about a huge protest across the whole United States, bigger than the hands across America. Because I guarantee you that if you take all your money out of the bank, don't tell anybody you're doing it, just do it. And enough of you do it, this country will come down to its knees immediately. They'll be begging you to please don't do this. To don't follow through with this. That's what they'll tell you before you finish doing, before you get to the point of the actual full damages that will happen from everybody not dealing with the banks. After all, for the people who have foreclosed homes, this Ms. Harris made the, made the bill that Go Governor uh, Brown signed say that you have to make direct contact with the homeowner. The banks were, making, were not making direct contact with you, so why should you have direct contact with any bank, especially with your money? I'd say fight fire with fire. 
Fight back. I don't care whether they signed a bill supposedly protecting you from this direct contact. Turn the tables on them. Don't make, don't make not just direct contact with the banks. Don't do business with them. Period. I mean, you, you work for somebody, tell them to pay you in cash. You don't take checks. Or uh, pay you through their credit card. You, you go down and, uh, and, uh, and, and fill out a form that lets you accept taking credit cards for payment. Everybody else is doing it on the Internet. I don't know why individuals who have jobs don't do it. And then you'll always be paid. But then that paying by credit card means you have to have a bank account. So just tell them, pay you cash. Cash, cash, cash. Give me cash. Well, anyway, that's the tape for today. We'll talk to you another time. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk tomorrow because I've got other problems. I got them trying to auction off a, uh, a storage now tomorrow, and I've uh, set the forms in and hope that maybe that will stop them. <laughs>